CSS positioning can be a little bit tricky, but I'm going to show you how to create an aeroplane using things like absolute position and relative position. And I'll show you a cool trick with fixed positioning at the end. So if you like this kind of content, my name's Adrian. Hit like and subscribe and let's just jump right into it. We'll start off with a completely blank canvas and have a look at adding our very first positioning property. Let's create a div with a class called airplane. For this div, let's add a style sheet for it with airplane down here. What our very first positioning property is, is initial. Now this basically means that it doesn't have an actual positioning property applied to it. And it's just using whatever it normally uses. And it doesn't influence any containers below it or above it in terms of positioning. Most elements are initial for their positioning and it's only until you apply either relative or absolute or something different that positioning comes into effect. So for the time being, we'll just leave this as initial. Let's add some additional styling to this airplane class and see if we can make it look a little bit better. Let's do a height of maybe 600 pixels, a width of maybe 200 pixels, a background of gray and a border radius of maybe 200 pixels. So this is the basic building blocks of an airplane body. All right, so let's create some wings for our airplane. We'll create a class here called wing.right. And this class here, I'll add some styling to it. Maybe a height of 50 pixels, a width of 200 pixels, and a background color of red. So we can see there it is. And we'll use a new type of positioning this time called absolute. Now, what absolute positioning is, is letting it be a little bit more flexible, but you have to define a property such as top, bottom, left, or right. And this essentially places this element wherever you decide to define those properties. So in this case, I might do a top of 50% and a left of zero pixels. Now, if we take a look at that, the top should be in the middle of our plane, but it's actually in the middle of our page. This is because the airplane positioning is on initial. So this wing isn't being positioned relative to our styling for the airplane. And for this to be fixed up, we would have to change this airplane positioning from, from initial to relative. By doing that, the wing is now positioned relative to where our airplane object is. And this is what we want and how absolute positioning works. Now we can define a little bit more for how we want this positioning. So we want it to be 200 pixels from the left. That's one way to position it. But if our airplane might change in size, this might not work well because the wing might be off center. So another thing we could do is we could do 100% for its position from the left. And this makes a lot more sense. And this way the wing is essentially being positioned off from the left side of the object. We can now apply this positioning just for the class here of right. And we can create another wing in here and call this wing left. Now for wing left, we can actually position this from the right of the element. And this way, it should take effect just the same. The only problem is if we define this, then we'll notice that the wing doesn't actually seem visible. And this is because it's off our page. And for this to be centered, we'll need to center our airplane. So let's create a body tag here with a display of flex and a justify content of center. So now we can see our entire airplane and its two wings. Let's see if we can just quickly style this plane to look a little bit better. Let's do a border top of maybe something like 50 pixels solid transparent and a border left of maybe 250 pixels solid gray. And we can do the same here for the bottom one. We'll apply this from the right in this case. We'll take away that black background color and maybe we'll increase this to about 100 pixels. Next, let's position this 33% from the top and maybe we'll make this airplane a little bit more narrow by about 150 pixels now. So that's looking a little bit more like an airplane. 
All right, so in order for our plane to move forward, we're gonna have to create some jets. Let's create a jet here on the left wing. We'll create a class called jet and add this here in our CSS. We'll maybe give it a height of 100 pixels, a width of 50 pixels, a border radius of 25 pixels and a background of AAA. So you can see it's floating off to the side here. We're gonna do a position of absolute and the absolute position inside an absolute position is relative to itself. So in this case, the position will be relative to the wing position. So what we can do now is do a top of zero pixels and a left of maybe something like 50 pixels. So we can see here that because we're using a CSS triangle, our wing is being positioned straight from the top of the element, which is essentially the top of the bottom of this triangle. So if we wanted to move up, we're going to have to create a negative val value here. We'll do negative 15 pixels and we can see it's moved up a little bit. We're going to need a little bit more though. So we'll do a negative 100 pixels and we'll do 150 from the left. So now we've got our first jet for our wing. To create the jet on the right, we simply copy over the same styling. But instead of creating classes that are positioned from the left, this time we'll just create the class with the property from the right and that immediately creates the jet there. So this plane is coming together quite good now. All we need really is a tail and makes it be some passenger windows. So what we'll do is we'll create a tail here. And for the tail, we want something that's a little bit more narrow at the bottom of the plane. So let's create a class here called tail in our CSS. And we'll put the position of this as absolute and for the absolute position, it's from the top is 100%. So that means that the tail will start from the bottom of the plane. We'll do a width of maybe 50 pixels and maybe a height of maybe something like 100 pixels. Finally, we'll also add a small border radius of maybe 25 pixels. We'll do a background color of red just so we can see it for now. So we also need to center it from the left. So we'll do left 50%, but that's not exactly centered. This is a problem that you might encounter when you're doing styling with absolute positions. So in order to fix this, what you can do is you can do a transition, sorry, a transform, and you transform this with a axis. So in this case, we're translating it from a X axis and doing negative 50%. If we do this, then we can see that it aligns perfectly there. Finally, because it's coming out of the plane a little bit, we might want to add a margin of negative 25 pixels, just so that it's going back into the element a little bit there. Let's also fix up this border radius so that we can see it. Beautiful. Now we can add a couple of small wings to this and the back of our plane should be done. We can probably just copy over some of the styling we were using before. So we've got our two wings here. Let's copy over these two wings we have and put this in the tail. Now what we'll do is we'll add a class called small here because right now these wings are way too large and we'll remove the jets from them. Next, what we'll do is we'll add this class down here to the wings. So for this one, we'll do it and small. And what we'll do is we'll change the border radius to something like maybe 50 pixels and 50 pixels. And we'll do the same thing for the left side. With that applied, we've got a much nicer looking back. And we'll probably add one more, which will be here called wing bottom. We'll create a custom element for this. And what we'll do here in the tail position, we'll do wing dash bottom. And we'll apply the same sort of styling here with a position of absolute right in the center. Except for this one, we'll have a slightly different type of height and width. With this one, we'll do a background color of red just so that we can see it, but we'll only do a width of 10 pixels and a height of maybe 50 pixels. And we'll do a margin top of negative 25 pixels. 
Finally, we'll turn this back to gray and we've got our element here, which looks a lot better. With this done, we can create now some windows for our airplane. And we can do this by just going here into the body tag and creating a new element. Maybe we'll just call this windows for the time being. Let's expand this out and create a class down here for this. Now for the windows, I'm thinking maybe um, creating a number of them by using a border radius. So what we'll do to start off with is we'll create a position of absolute. And for this absolute position, we'll do top zero pixels, bottom zero pixels, left zero pixels and right zero pixels. Then finally, we'll do a border rate. Sorry, we'll do a border of one pixel solid red, just so we can see it. So if we have a look at this, and I'll increase this to four pixels, we can see that the absolute positioning is causing this to go around the body of the plane. So we're going to offset this by 15 pixels, so that it's not directly within the plane itself. So that looks a little bit better. For the top and bottom elements, we probably have to offset it a little bit more. So I'm going to do 50 pixels for both of those. Finally, instead of a solid border, we can do maybe dotted and we could make the sizing a little bit bigger, such as 10 pixels. Then we might only do this border on the left side and on the right side. And finally, we might make it the white color now that we've got that done. So now we've got some beautiful windows going along the sides of our plane. And this is pretty easy because the absolute positioning just takes effect and happens within the body of the plane itself. We're going to take a look at another CSS position called fixed. And this essentially means that it stays in the same position, doesn't matter where you scroll. And in this case, you normally see them in headers where the header sticks to the top of the page. But in this case, we'll create a cloud. And for this cloud item, we'll create a position here of fixed and we'll position it maybe 33% from the top and 33% from the left. Now to give this a little bit of styling, we'll do a background of white and a opacity of maybe 0 0.5. And finally, we'll give it a width of maybe 200 pixels, a height of 200 pixels and a border radius of maybe 50%. So there we can see our cloud and we can't see it very well because we don't actually have a background for our body. So let's put that in. Let's do a min height here of 100 view height and let's do a background of linear gradient. And we'll do it to the right and we'll put these two um, colors in, which is a very nice blue I found earlier for the sky. So let's put this in and there we go. So now we can see our cloud on top of our plane. Now the reason it's on top is because it's underneath our component here and our tag. If we move it above, you can see now the cloud exists below the plane. So we can change this. We can use Z index, for example, and we can give it a Z index of say 500. And by doing this, we're not moving the X or Y axis, we're moving the Z axis, which is the layering that happens for this element. If we were, for example, to put the airplane on a higher Z axis, such as a thousand, we'll see that the cloud is now below. But if we increase the cloud to 1500, we see it's up above again. And this is essentially how you utilize Z axis with relative and absolute positions as well as fixed positions. In this case, we've got most of our buildings blocks now, so we could make the height of the page maybe something like 8,000 pixels and have a look at how the scroll effect works. So we can see here for the cloud, it remains in the same fixed position while the absolute position for the plane here actually moves about. There are other CSS properties such as sticky position or static position, and we might explore those in a future video. I'm doing more around design and development, and I've got a video up here for CSS triangles and one up here for developing an entire website in WordPress. So if you like this kind of content and you want to see more like it, hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.